Number 15. A cruise ship with a mass of 1 times 10 to the 7 kilograms strikes a pier at a speed of 0.75 meters per second. It comes to rest 6 meters later, damaging the ship, the pier, and the tugboat captain's finances. Calculate the average force exerted on the pier using the concept of impulse. All right. Here we have our cruise ship that has a sail on it for whatever reason, and it's going to hit the table, which we'll pretend is a pier. So now, uh, after this boat hits the pier, now what's going to happen is it's going to the pier is essentially going to be compressed, right? So the pier is going to be compressed, and it's going to be compressed. Actually, let me do that in in red. The pier is going to be compressed by let's say six meters. Well, not let's say. I mean that's what it told us. Six meters. Okay. So it takes six meters for then the uh, this distance basically, right, for the uh, cruise ship here to uh, come to rest. So we know that the velocity here at the end is going to be, I'll call it the final velocity of the uh, ship, is going to be zero meters per second. If we now uh, take a look at you know, what we need uh, to know in order to solve this question, we're thinking then about impulse. And the impulse here is going to be, remember, impulse is simply change in momentum is equal to the force multiplied by the time over which that force acts. So to find force, just simply divide out the time for both sides. And we find that the force is equal to the change in the momentum divided by the time. Expanding the change in momentum, we can write it as mass times Vf minus Vi, all right, divided by time. I, I've showed how to get from here to here in the past problems of this chapter. I'm just going to start speeding that part up, okay? So now, we have this formula. In order to calculate force, we've got to know four things. Mass of the ship, final velocity of the ship, initial velocity of the ship, and the time of which it took to change the velocity from the, fi from the excuse me, initial to the final, right? All right. So uh, do we know the mass of the ship? Yeah, they told us, right? One times 10 to the 7. Great. Do we know the final velocity of the ship? Yeah, it's coming to a rest, right? It's going to stop. So that's going to be zero. Do we know the initial velocity of the ship? Sure. It was coming in at 0.75 meters per second. Do we know the time over which it took to stop the ship from, or take its velocity from 0.75 to zero? No, we don't, right? But we know the distance. So guess what? Think, think back to kinematics. Here it comes again, right? We have to know these formulas. And uh, even though you might not be tested directly on kinematics on your test coming up, it always keeps coming back. So the final, uh, excuse me, the initial velocity here will be 0 0.750 meters per second. The final velocity of that ship is zero, okay, meters per second. The distance over which it comes to a rest is going to be six meters, and I need to find the time. So we got to think about a formula that relates from kinematics, those four variables, and we remember one of them, right? Remember that formula, the uh, displacement is equal to one half times the, oops, times the final velocity plus the initial velocity multiplied by the time. That's the formula. Now, uh, let's simplify this. Let's actually just solve this thing for time, okay? Now, remember, the final velocity is zero, so I'm just going to put a little x through that, okay? And this basically becomes now x is equal to one half, right, times the initial velocity multiplied by time. So all I need to do now is divide out the one half vi from both sides, right? one half vi, and that now tells me that the time will be equal to, you know, you can write it this way, the displacement over one half times vi, or you can rewrite this as 2x over vi. Okay, either way, I'm going to leave it this way just because less fractions. So uh, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the time, this is the time, and I'm going to plug that in to my formula now. Okay, so now my new formula becomes that the force is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the final velocity, uh, excuse me, minus the initial velocity, all over then 2 times the displacement divided by the initial velocity. So, do we know all of these uh, variables? We do, right? Like I said, we already know the numerators, we talked about them, we know the initial velocity, and we know the displacement. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We're just simply going to plug it in. So for this formula, excuse me, for this problem, this is my formula overall, okay? So now let's just plug in the mass of the ship 
was 1.00 times 10 to the 7. Okay, the final velocity of the ship was zero. The initial velocity of that ship was 0 0.750. Okay, all divided by now, two times the displacement, which was six meters, all divided then by the initial velocity. And what was that initial velocity? 0 0.750. Okay, let's just plug it on in and let's find the force. So let's, okay, take out the handy dandy calculator. And let's do this. So I'm going to do the denominator first. 2 times 6 divided by 0.75. That's 16. And now do 1 times 10 to the 7th multiplied by negative 0.75. And divide that by then the 16. And we get a negative value. Okay. Negative 4.69 um, times 10 raised to the 5. Okay. And that's in terms of, whoops. And that is in terms of Newtons. All right, so now that's the force. It should make sense, it should be negative, okay? Because, um, think about this, right? The ship is moving to the right. It's eventually slowing down. Uh, so I really stress the S, slowing down. Um, it's moving to the right and therefore since it's slowing down though, there must be a force that opposes this motion and that force must be pointing in the opposite direction, right? So that's pointing to the left and that's why this is negative. But in terms of your answer, just give it, uh, just answer it in terms of the positive. All right. Uh, why? Because it depends on how I frame the question here. I could have easily had the ship, right? Look at this thing. It looks like a Carnival Cruise Line. This thing coming, you know, in from this direction, and now all of a sudden the force is pointing to the right, and so that's positive. So again, the sign just tells you the direction, but the direction was totally dependent upon uh, how I chose to create the problem. There was no guidance in the question as to how to do that. And therefore, you can answer it negative or positive, but just basically give the absolute value. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helps. Please remember to subscribe. Tell your friends if you like. We wouldn't mind at all. And uh, have a great day. All right, study hard. Take care.